Well, welcome to worship this morning. We are so glad to have you with us. Uh, feel free to interact in the chat. Say good morning. Uh, pass the peace and say amen if something resonates with you. In that spirit, let's sing our gathering song. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find joy in your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from Psalms chapter 1, verse 6. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of the sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Today's Holy Gospel comes to us from John 17. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they believe that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not, a, I'm not asking on the behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, 
but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you had given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. And I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So Shay and I are approaching our 14th wedding anniversary in June. And for our honeymoon 14 years ago, we booked a 14-day cruise to the Mediterranean. It was incredible, otherworldly. Every need was catered to. Food was available at all times of the day. Entertainment around the clock. And every morning, we woke up to a new city or country and had the day to explore. We were free to do whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted. And at first, it was incredible. We were spoiled for choice. So many options to take advantage of. But nearing the last third of the cruise, something unexpected set in. Boredom, of all things. Turns out, endless vacationing can kind of lose its luster. We found ourselves sleeping in a lot, missing in mealtimes, uh, struggling to find things to keep us entertained. Even being entertained began to get boring, and we longed for genuine human interaction, not just endless sightseeing. It was so surprising. It, it almost sounds ungrateful, but the cathedrals of Europe began to blend together after a while. But that's the sign of a, a great vacation, right? When it ends, you're, you're just ready to go back home and get back to life. There is something very tempting about escaping from the world, leaving the day-to-day -day grind and messiness of normal existence. Travel agents, the tourist industry, and the real estate business know this well. They spend millions to lure us to take luxury cruises where every whim is met, to enjoy fractional ownership in condos at the shore, to buy a second home in the mountains, or to live in a gated community where we can leave our workday pressures behind. And there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these kind of adventures, but it's not where we've been made to live life. We need a mission, a purpose, a reason for being, something to drive our waking up. Pure escapism doesn't offer the purpose that we've been made for. And the ultimate reality is we've been made for the messiness. It's our purpose or reason for being. It's those rough edges of the world that actually shape us. Today's scripture is a prayer. It's often called the high priestly prayer. And I suppose you don't get any higher of a priest than Jesus. Many theologians stress that this is a model. Jesus is teaching his disciples about the duality that all Jesus followers find themselves in. We live in a world that is chaotic and can be cruel. Yet we aren't made to completely withdraw from it. We're made to draw good out of it. Have you ever met someone that seemed one step too eager to get to heaven already? I feel like everyone has a relative or a, a, a meemaw 
in a wicker rocker that was always saying one of the two things. It was either, oh, Jesus, take me now, or, oh, Jesus, just come back already. Maybe you're the Mima, I, I don't know. But it expresses the sense of being frustrated with the mess of the world. It's too much to handle. Where's the skip button on this whole thing so we can get to the good bits where God is in charge and, and heaven is happening? Jesus, in his prayer, expresses the same sensation. He has his disciples that he loves, that he knows God loves, and he has to send them out into the world. They can't skip it, and it's hard. So he prays for them and us. I love verses in the Bible where Jesus prays for those that follow him because we receive these ancient prayers too. He prays three things. Number one, for the creator's protection. Two, for their unity with each other. And three, that they would be sanctified. Said another way, Jesus asks God to draw us close to him, draw us close to each other, and use the world to draw the good out of us. Jesus has walked with his friends, the disciples, for three years. And what a walk it has been. Their lives are in a completely different place than where they started. Jesus has pulled back the veil between the physical and the spiritual, exposed the very heart of God for humanity and made it abundantly clear what our purpose as people is. It's to be good. It's to be good people, even when it's hard. And he calls this process sanctification. Sanctification is a partnership between God and us where we willingly let God search us, find growth areas, find areas that just don't look like Jesus yet. And we ask God to help us. We are willing to let God mold us, shave off rough edges, and challenge us to face areas of our life we would much rather ignore. But it's our purpose to become more loving, kind, gentle, and giving humans. In the crucible of this change, is the world that we live in, as, as messy as it can be. If we skip it, we skip what God can do in us and through us. I think sometimes we assume it'd be easier to, to pursue holiness on a mountaintop or a secluded forest away from the cacophony of the modern world. But God asks us to do the opposite, to, to live in the world, but not give in to it. Over the years, lots of people have interpreted that to mean different things. People have assumed it to mean uh, not listening to music with drums in it, or music of a certain content, or not to read certain books or do certain activities. But I think a lot of that is, it's kind of thinking small. Being the world but not of it doesn't mean isolating off from the parts of it we don't agree with. Somehow, intertwined, and a, a part of this sanctification process is this need to be connected to a still broken world. Somehow, the world and us need each other. The world's use for good people, people who will be kind when it would be easy to be dismissive, who will give when others would take, who will look out for others when others would look out for their own. The world's need for good people is obvious, but we need the world too. The world gives us our mission and our purpose. Even the most monastic of our church movements still found that they needed the world to live a holy life. They gave and served and worked and advised the human beings they moved among. This year, this year has been hard been hard because many of us have been isolated from our life-giving communities, from our families, from our neighbors. And the world seems to be hitting new heights of chaos. It's been weird 
because we haven't been able to do much to help the world. But we can't stop hearing about how awful everything is all the time. We've been isolated, but not exactly on vacation. We've been out of the world, yet affected by it. Like the Uno reverse card of in the world, but not of it. And now, this week, the CDC has said that masks aren't necessary for fully vaccinated people. And Illinois is beginning to open back up. We're entering a season where we can begin to leave our seclusion. And it's okay. It's okay if you're feeling reluctant. And it's okay if you're feeling like this is long overdue. It's been hard on all of us. Hard in different ways, depending on your, on your situation, your temperament, and your risk level. But as I've been pondering this new news, I am reminded that we need the world. That it's easier on our hearts when we, when we can do the work we've been called to do. And I'm reminded of the things that Christ prayed for us. He prayed that God will protect us. He prayed that we will be unified with one another and that we're sanctified through our time in the world. No, no skip button needed. This is where we grow. This is where we become the people that God always intended us to be. Our best, most whole, most loving selves. So let's give peace to those who are anxious. Comfort those who are suffering. Let us meet needs with our resources. Let us show patience with those that differ from us. Let us meet anger with love. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas team with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep the world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will be abundant light. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, here in the community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts and the unique to us, that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we praise, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
and changed to Troop 655 due to a duplication of numbers. Uh, they have ended their tenure here with St. Mark's, but that doesn't mean that the, the love that they shared with us stops. Uh, we just recently had an Eagle Scout complete a project. Not long before that, we had another Eagle Scout that's, that's a member here complete a project. So the work that they have done here over the years and the, the companionship they've provided, uh, just been terrific. And I want to thank Ken Norton and Gene Norkis and everyone who's been a part of the Scouts here for the many, many years of their support. Uh, to sort of solidify that, the Scouts were kind enough to do a $5,000 donation to St. Mark's. And in honor of that, we're presenting and we'll post on our Tree of Life uh, a bronze leaf that will forever say Troop 65, reminding us to do good turn daily. So we want to thank them very much for all their support over the many years. I personally want to thank these folks because I've had a very good relationship with Ken and Gene for a long, long time doing projects and uh, just a great bunch of people. And I can't tell you the number of wonderful uh, kids that have come out of here out of their program. So let's give them all please a round of applause. Thank you guys. So a brief announcement based on another announcement. So this week, the CDC announced some interesting news about masks. The lowdown, if you haven't heard, is that fully vaccinated people no longer need to wear masks indoors or outdoors. This is really exciting for returning to normal. And actually, we were all ready to go with an email that outlined our plan for a return to our building later in June. But this CDC announcement adds a, a new layer to think about. So I want you to know that we know and we are making plans and we are going to do one more meeting with our safety team and our council before we're ready to announce our next phase of in-person gathering. We also want to fully consider the spectrum of how people are feeling about this new announcement. So thank you for all your patience and encouragement through this process and, and thank you to the safety team and council for their continued attention and mental work on all of this. We will meet in person next week in the parking lot on May 23rd, which is Pentecost Sunday, and I cannot wait to see all of you there. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.